Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Tech Tutor. Today we're going to talk about setting up a scheduler. So if you ever want to set up something to run every day, run at a specific interval, run one time at a specific date and time, this is what's going to help you do that right here. I'm going to show you how to set up courts, which we're going to use a Postgres database to do. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want to see anything else about this, also let me know. And we'll just go ahead and dive in the code right now. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this POM file. You can see some of the dependencies I have. So I'm using Spring Boot Starter Quartz. This has some different classes we will use to connect to our database and utilize the Quartz tables. Then also Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. This is going to help us interact with the database. The Flyaway dependency, this is what I'm using to create the Quartz tables. So if you're not familiar with Flyaway, just take a look at my other video on Flyaway. I'll put a link in the description. And then this Postgres dependency, so that way we can interact with our database. And Lombok is another library that I like to use because it just kind of helps with getters and setters and other uh, very boilerplate code. And the last two are pretty standard. Then we'll take a look at this Docker Compose file. So here I am standing up a Postgres database and I'm setting the username, the password, and the database name. So if you don't know what I'm doing here, again, I have another video on this to set up with Postgres and I start talking about how uh, you can interact with it and verify it with dBeaver. I can put a link in the description for that one as well. Now, in the application YAML, I'm just setting up some different properties. Uh, the important one here is really just making sure that you're connecting to your data source properly. Again, uh, I set the username and password in that Docker Compose YAML. Uh, the fact that you're using a Postgres database. And also, uh, for me, I like to set fail on empty beans to false for this particular one just because uh, it just makes it easier to get started with passing back different payloads for the different courts classes. Uh, if you don't want to do this, you can kind of play around with things, but that's just what I like to do. Now in this courts configuration file, I have all kinds of things going on here and I have some links to documentation. So once I post this on my GitHub, you can take a look at this. Uh, in more detail, but in general, I am setting up different properties. And one of the important parts too is that I'm setting up this application context here, which we will use to be able to wire in uh, different beans into our, um, our job class. So I'll get to that in a moment as well. You're also adding your data source and the different properties that I'm setting here. And if you have any questions on this, just let me know. Now I'm also using this auto wiring spring bean job factory. So this actually, I, I took from an example that I found online uh, just to help me for setting up my course configuration because it is required in here for me to be able to set that job factory. Um, it's pretty basic. So I would just suggest going with the example I have here unless you really need to do anything special. Now, the Quartz controller that I've created, this is where I'm going to uh, create some APIs to help interact with the Quartz database to get all of my jobs by groups. And um, also there is different ones to add or update a job. And again, by group and the name of the job, this one actually will get you all of the jobs. And then uh, you have the ability to also pause and resume. And all of this is actually um, set up in my court service I've created to interact. And so the court service will actually make use out of a class that we're pulling in through that courts dependency. And I'll show that shortly as well. And let's go ahead and look at that service class. So now in the service class, you can see that I actually have the scheduler class that I'm pulling in, which comes from that courts dependency, which again, Spring has made this class for you to make it much easier to interact with your Quartz database. So it's got all kinds of functions that I'm using and I've just wrapped them in my own methods so that way I can uh, do different things, log exactly what's happening. So I have a method to create a job, to find all the jobs, to find a specific job, update a job, delete a job, pause a job, and resume a job. 
Next, let's take a look at this action class. So you have to actually implement the job class that is again part of that course library. And for this job class, uh, you wanna say what happens when the job executes. Now the important thing here too is that you'll notice that the way that I'm actually wiring in a dependency is with this line right here with application context. So I can't exactly auto wire like I do in most classes because uh, just the way this class is set up, that's not going to work. So I would highly suggest you do something like this and now you can then get the bean with this function right here and then uh, use it as you need. So if you need to wire in other beans, I would just suggest putting another one at the top here and then also saying get bean on that. Next, let's move over to the other classes that we're using. So I have this job descriptor class, and this is just to help me be able to save the jobs to our database so that way it will run them and then associate them with triggers. Now also, as I mentioned earlier about that action class, that has to extend the job, or sorry, implement job class. So if you see here, when you create a new job, which this is again, a function that comes with that quartz library, you need to then provide the class that is implementing jobs. So in this case, I have action. So if you wanna change this, you wanna add other classes, add more functions, feel free to do that. Uh, but this is where I'm just kind of summarizing this piece is necessary so that way you can wire in your job class and allow you to execute jobs. And lastly, uh, aside from the job descriptor class, we also have the trigger descriptor class, and this class is what I'm using to set up my triggers. So there's two different ones that I am allowing you to create. So you can create a cron trigger or a fire time trigger. The cron trigger will take cron expressions, whereas the fire time is going to actually take basically a time string, and it's going to convert that time string into a one-time fire instruction. So if I were to say, that I wanted to fire uh, today at 5 p.m. I put today's date in 5 p.m. And I'll show an example of this in Postman when I get around to that in just a moment. And before I forget, uh, let me also talk about how I set up the tables. So over in this Quartz configuration class, I actually have a link to the tables that are required. This is mentioned in the Quartz documentation on their GitHub they have. And basically I put those tables into this flyaway SQL script. And so when flyaway runs, it's going to create these tables that are required for quartz. Now let's go ahead and spin up our database. So uh, again, if you haven't seen my other videos, you need to be in the same directory as your Docker compose file. So I'll just go ahead and open terminal here. And this one I've already placed in the same directory where this terminal opens up, which is quartz. So to start it, it's just docker compose up dash D. And now just do docker PS to validate that it's running. And you can see that it is running right now. In fact, I actually already had this up running. I didn't even realize it, but that's what you would do to start it. And if you ever want to stop it, it's docker dash compose stop or if you want to tear it down and completely start over, it'd be docker compose down dash V. So now that my database is running, let's go ahead and start the application. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and click this run button. And as you can see, it started up successfully on port 8090. So now we're ready to go over to Postman and add jobs to run. And then we'll come back here and look at the logs to validate that what we've added is working. Okay, over here in Postman, I have some different APIs I've already set up. So I'm going to use my API for creating a job. And this one will be my example for how you create a cron job. So I'm going to add it to group one. And so I'll name it example cron action. I'm gonna store a little bit of data and this is going into the job map that is in the job class. So basically you can store different data and you can also modify it, which I'll show in just a moment as well. And then my trigger that is associated with my job is right here, which this is saying that I want it to run once every minute. So I'll go ahead and add that. 
and you can see the response from my server. So now let's go ahead and also add another one. And this one will be the one where I'm kind of showing you how you can fire at a very specific time. So in this case, I will change it to today's date, which is 311. And right now it is almost nine o'clock where I'm at. So let's go ahead and set the time to nine o'clock. And then I will also send this one. And you can see that I've also stored a different value, some other value in the stored value, which again, this is going in the job map. So we'll revisit that shortly. Now, if I wanted to pause a job, I could pause a job. So uh, we'll wait a moment to make sure the other one had a chance to run before I pause it. And then after that, we will also resume it. So let's go ahead and also say what this update job does. So I'm able to update that data that I was storing in the cron job. And so I'm going to change it to say some new value just to show you that you can update an existing job in the database and you can play around with how you're storing things if you want to update things differently or you know just change exactly how this function works. This is just how I'm using it. So go ahead and click send. And then when we see this run later, we'll see that it was running with the first value and then it will also end up running with this new value. So we're gonna pause that job in just a second, but let's also finish to these other APIs. So let's use this one to get all the jobs. And as you can see, it has both of our jobs, the one with the fire time and the one that is the cron action. So now if I wanted to get just one job, I could do that also. So we'll get just our cron action job and you can see that works there. And then I can also have the capability to delete a job. So before I delete a job, let's go ahead and pause our cron job. And then we will see that after it is paused, we will see that it will not run and we'll wait and we'll validate that. So uh, we'll wait a minute or two. And then after that, we will resume the job. So that way you'll see there's this gap where it was paused. So for now, I'm just going to let it run for a couple minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, now that it's run for a couple of minutes, as it's been paused, let's go ahead and resume the job. And then we'll give this another couple of minutes so that way it actually has a chance to fire the job at least once after we've resumed it. And then after that, I will delete the job so that way it won't run at all again. And then we'll just validate that it stops running. Okay, it's had a minute to run. So now let's go ahead and delete the job so that way it won't run anymore. And now that it has been deleted, let's go ahead and create a different job just so that way we can show that this other job is running whereas the other one we just deleted is no longer running. So let's go ahead and say example cron action two and let's also change it so that way it's a little bit quicker. We'll just make it run, uh, let's say every 10 seconds. And then we'll go ahead and send that. All right, now let's have a little bit of time. Let's go back over to IntelliJ and validate everything that I just did. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this application just so that way the logs don't continue to run more jobs. And now let's go ahead and look through this log. Here you can see where I saved the cron job, the first one. And you can see that it ran at this time. And then you see that stored value one that I was showing before. That was what I was creating the job with. And then it even tells you when the next time it'll run, which is a minute later. And then you also see where I'm saving the fire time job. After that, that cron job is running again at the 59 mark. Same stored value. And then it completes. And now I'm updating that cron job and I ended up pausing it. Now our fire time had actually executed, which again, I had set it to execute at nine o'clock. And then after that, you're seeing that I resume that cron job we had. 
And after I resumed that cron job, you are also seeing that update I made where I changed it from some value to some new value. And then after that, I have deleted it. And then it no longer runs anymore after that, which again, it was running every minute. But you can see that some time has passed and it wasn't running again after that. But instead, my cron job action two, which I set to run every 10 seconds, had gotten a chance to run a couple times here, or three times actually. So that wraps up this introduction to Quartz and using Spring to do it. Again, I was also utilizing Flyway as well as Docker to spin up my database. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I hope this video was helpful. If you wanna hear anything more about Quartz or if you wanna see any other types of videos in the future, let me know. And please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel for future content, and I'll see you next time.